Hello, hello. It's great to be here. Thank you for invitation and thank you for stopping by. Uh, our way to here was quite long. It started in 2017, yeah, and it was full of hard work, uh, dead ends, screw ups, hard work again, uh, arguing with uh, family about using my time, their time, yeah, and it was full of pain, you know, stuck, stuck to a finger between the keys on the keyboard, yeah, and on the other hand, it was full of fun and laugh. Yeah, and so it's a great thing. Yeah, so our topic is strengthening cyber resiliency in the time of geopolitical crisis, applying threat intelligence and active defense to protecting critical information infrastructure. And here is the first recommendation. Did you know that the longer and more complex uh, name of your presentation you will use, you have the better chance to get here and speak have a speech. <laughs> okay? So, about this presentation, it's all about our practical experience with uh, reactive elements and trying to use active cyber defense elements and it's about our use and implementation. Another thing which is uh, very important is our approach. It's proactive. It's about combining everything we can. Reactive, uh, active, proactive, yeah? And the way we, we go is use ACD elements where reactive elements fail. And under reactive, you can see typical alerting system, yeah? Ex post reaction. Before we start, I need to say something, <laughs> yeah. Everything we do and say, we do with a huge respect to everybody and their intention in cyberspace and kinetic space too. Yeah, and the same respect we expect for us. We will try you the whole story from the beginning to the end, not just only part. Uh, and it's quite hard in 30 minutes, yeah, but... Um, all, uh, there is a few information we can say, you know, NDA. So, thank you to be respectful for this. Let's go to the prelude of our invitation. Who we are and we don't. Uh, we are critical information infrastructure. We build and, and provisioning the cloud uh, private cloud for Ministry of Finance in the Czech Republic. Yeah, and it's quite a hard thing. Uh, as far as government cloud, we are prepared for offering the same services in the quality in our private cloud or with using commercial clouds uh, for the government cloud. I mean, for the critical one, but we're still waiting for political decision to do it yeah, and do it good. We are state company, but we are not army or any secret services which have a title to use active cyber defense. Yeah? We just fun of active, uh, active uh, cyber defense and we like to do things different uh, on the edge, yeah? in the gray zone. And uh, gray zone is very important for us. Uh, in the uh, year 2017, the George Washington University compiled the, uh, the document which was called in the gray zone. Uh, we, take that, uh, we take that research, little bit change it, little bit uh, enrich. And as you see, uh, we, can, uh, we can do the things on the left side, on your left side which you can do like in, uh, uh, in your organization without any problems. On the right side, your right side, of course, uh, there are operations you should not do. There are, those are adversary takedowns, ransomware, and we mean the good ransomware, humanitarian ransomware, rescue mission and sanctions and other, other business uh, remedies. 
But uh, this, this gray zone and uh, categories in that gray zone led us to our first screw up. And I have to tell that we promise to Black Hat that we don't use the F word. That's why we have some screw ups here. Yeah, and it was about considering deception as the holy grail. Yeah, before we started to looking at the uh, ACD gray zone as a whole process and part of the process, uh, we thought how cool we are, especially <laughs> when we were talking about deception and engaging the adversaries to people and they were staring at, at us with dis disbelief. Yeah? Uh, I felt very, very cool, but it's a long time ago, about a week. Yeah? And the way not to, not to lead this, the new and unknown doesn't mean functional. Yeah, we, we just wanted to deploy some honeypot or beacon in the environment, and that was enough about, about security for us, yeah? So, you need a process, not just a you know, solution. So, the security is a broad topic. Yeah, and as a critical information infrastructure, we have implemented a lot of things based on regulation, based on, based on best practices, you know. But in this presentation, we will aim to cyber threat intelligence and active cyber defense processes and elements. And in addition to processes, there are people, and these people are we. My name is Andre Nekovar. I am CISO and Chief Deception Officer. I have a few certificates, uh, of course, especially for, uh, for swimming, you know, bronze swimming certificate, <laughs> silver, yeah, do you remember? Yeah, silver, uh, silver <laughs> swimming certificate. I am white Amy. Yeah, I'm good in compliance, in uh, leading people, in finishing things, and I can see the whole problem and solution in a, se in a second. Yeah, I'm manager, yeah, and with all its pros. And my dear colleague, please stand up. My dear colleague is Jean-Paul. He is a uh, threat hunter, uh, um, active cyber de de defense architect and practical CISOs advisor. He is my right hand in the battlefield. Yeah, he go deep into the technical solution, and he helps me a lot. Yeah, and there is another. I will screw up with the F word on the beginning. Uh, we thought that uh, uh, we thought uh, about the uh, about the active cyber defense about the gray zone for a long time. And we try to actually connect it with the, uh, with the attack framework, uh, like TTP, with the countermeasures from the uh, active cyber defense. Uh, we call it Matrix, which was like a working name. And uh, unfortunately, we thought that long that my track came with, the, came with the own solution, which then they called in 2020, they call it Shield. But uh, now it's engaged. But we still believe that uh, some of us uh, sold it to Mitre. But remember, the best things are free, and we will show you in our presentation, we're working only uh, with the open source and free stuff. Yeah, and how we hustle the security. Now we will open the Pandora cube, uh, show you a miracle, uh, magic box, uh, anything, but uh, not actually. Yeah, we go the traditional way, you know, pro people, processes, and technology. And main thing for us is the active attitude in everything we do. So, this presentation is about our uh, research and its results. We try to, to applicate the real, uh, real adversary scenario to, to our uh, things we created. Uh, we go through the, our paradigm, I mean our environment, hypothesis, 
uh, our research methodology, it's about the uh, use case close-up, open source armory we use, and our results. And finally, we will try to give you some recommendation and takeaways, especially when you see a Kevin McAllister on the screen, it's good recommendation not to do that this way. Yeah. Once upon a time, my colleague will introduce you our paradigm. Yeah, once upon a time, there was a paradigm. The, actually, um, the paradigm is our, uh, is our universe. Uh, that's uh, what we have and what we're trying to, uh, what we're trying to defend. Uh, those are like technologies like anywhere else in any other company. We are not a different Linux, Windows. We have some IBM stuff too. And uh, it's of, uh, of course, that means we are operating two data centers, so it means also the IOTs. But it's also the cloud, we use all kinds of clouds, private, hybrid, uh, public, everything. But also those are uh, regulations which we are tied with. And uh, here in European Union, not here, no, here, not, uh, there, <laughs> there in European Union, you have to be tied to some regulations, which are uh, uh, GDPR and stuff like that. And of course, another, another frameworks or, uh, or directives. Uh, we use a lot of open source, uh, some we have support for, some we do like we have support, and some we don't have support at all. And of course, we have a lot of both magic in the box, which we don't know what does, uh, what does but we will find out one day. Uh, but our most valuable thing is our, it's, uh, the mindset, uh, mindset of our defenders, and that's the, uh, that's the proactive way to do things. Uh, we also trying to do things in the loops, like, okay, oh no, another loop, yeah, it will be another loop, I promise. Uh, so we're trying to do the things uh, again and again and again and again to go to goal of the continuous security. And we do that through the validation. Through the validation and when the detection rules are not enough, we fill the blind spots with the active cyber defense elements. There is also detection engineering, which is very sexy these days. Everybody is doing detection engineering. And we are using, as I said, uh, as countermeasure against the, against the thing we cannot uh, cover with the defense uh, or detection. And with the things, we don't know much. We're trying to put the countermeasure as the active cyber uh, elements. And we, of course, love our CTI. And it's CTI is our way. Uh, we're doing like everything with CTI. We're making coffee with CTI. We're doing for the threat modeling, threat emulation, detection engineering. We're observing the uh, threat landscape of ours with the uh, CTI. And we're looking for possible external attack vectors with the, with the, with the CTI. Basically, CTI become our most, most uh, important process. Another, not screw up, but problem, uh, was for us the prioritization. What to do first, what next, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, we actually was safe from this, from the solution, with the incoming conflict in Russia and against the Ukraine. So that, we, that speed up our priority, and we start to look on the east. As we said before, we had some strategy, we had some, uh, some experience, we had some processes with some, some uh, maturity, and we knew that winter is coming. Although it was almost spring, but everybody who was, or who is monitoring the Russian scene knew that something really bad is on its way. Yeah? And that's why we asked ourselves a few questions. Yeah, how we can uh, work, uh, work with our knowledge and experience, how to combine it to be better, to be, more, or I guess, better prepared for what is coming. So, are my hypothesis. Does the ACD attitude work for better resiliency and um, to go to better focus, we created or ask ourselves other complementary questions.
Can ACD eliminate the possibility of successful attack? Is it possible to anticipate or prepare for an attack due to CTI? Is it possible to increase the resiliency of the environments that thanks to hardening detection rules loop? And with what accuracy can attack be predicted based on the CTI analysis? And now we go to research methodology. Russian-oriented CTI by threat actor. Thanks to our experience and uh, with, <laughs> with, the, with the Russia and its behavior, I mean, communists, maybe you heard about it. So uh, we were uh, interested in monitoring the, the Russia, Russian scene. And we can see that there are used the same action, yeah? same attacks still, on the satellite network, uh, on um, using the DDoS and the malware dist distribution, still the same. And the cyber attacks bec uh, became uh, well, before the kinetic attacks, yeah, we saw. And believe me or not, agree or disagree, the cyber warfare is a standard now, part of the war. There's no other only kinetic war. It's a hybrid war. Uh, thanks to our rich history, uh, we, we know that we must do, so, do something. And we started, uh, but not superficially. We're trying to assessing maturity of each, uh, each adversary, of risk of it. But we had the problem, how to separate the adversaries because Russia is a big country, I believe it's still biggest in the world, but uh, uh, how we can, uh, we can separate the important adversaries for us and those who are just like blabbering, just talking. So we was looking for like everywhere and we maybe because of our uh, problems with the Google, we didn't find any matrix or any, uh, any methodology how to access or how to assess the maturity of the adversary. So uh, we just come to old analysis of competitive hypothesis, which was created uh, by Hauer in CIA in the 80s, in 80s of uh, last century. And uh, we use that for the, uh, for the maturity of this or for analysis of those, of those adversaries. Uh, we use for hypothesis, we use the, we actually use the four categories which we like divided and that was like uh, by the goal or by the intent of that of the adversary and that was like destructive, disruptive, espionage or criminal. You see, this is like very simple, uh, very simple screenshot from the ACH where you got on the top, you got the, uh, uh, our hypothesis and down we have our validations or, uh, and on the weighted, on the weighted, uh, weighted performance of those adversary, we uh, conclude that the destructive goal is the one who should we be scared of the most. The destructive goal, we, I'm sorry, that's daughter. <laughs> I have to take that. Uh, as the destructive goal, you can see the, uh, make the whole or part system un, uh, unusable or just like complete destruct. And we can see that on the ransomware, wipers, MBR rewrites, uh, et cetera. Thank you, mate. Uh, yeah. So, and there is no intelligence without, uh, without good data and information and using in, in, in complex. So, our main resources are Telegram, Ultimate CTI tool for Russian uh, scene, uh, forums, different forums, uh, other social media like Contact or Twitter, and data leaks, uh, a lot, not a lot, but some information we got uh, from the leaked database by, uh, from Killnet. Uh, third party, CTI reports, DFAIR, for example, uh, and Sentinel-1, Microsoft Apps, good one. Who is who in the Russian cyber espionage? In the middle, you can, you can see uh, the state actors, secret services, FSO, FSB, SVR, GRU. 
Yeah, and we know, because it was attributed in, in the past, that, for example, GRU is managing the APT Group 2028. And on the other hand, on the other side, so there are cyber criminals and activists. Uh, and there is, you can see on the picture, is a tiny connection with these secret services. We do not say that uh, they manage these cyber criminals and activist group, but maybe they're sharing some knowledge, you know. So, who is who? We tried to uh, choose uh, two different groups with two different maturity. First is hacktivist groups, for example, Killnet and Hacknet. On the other hand, in uh, maturity, there are APT and campaigns groups uh, like a Coming Project, Mummy Spider, Salty Spider, uh, <laughs> Smoky Spider, Scully Spider, Wizard Spider, and Sandworm. And <laughs> do <laughs> these two, Sandworm and Killnet, are uh, very important for our research. Yeah, they are. Uh, is here somebody who doesn't hear about Killnet? Yeah, it's just me. Okay, the Killnet as group, as criminal group, started as uh, as provider of DDoS, uh, DDoS as services. They sell it, and in the end of January or start of February, they all uh, recently turned out, and they they are now the biggest Russian patriots on the internet. They got very good PR, like, uh, we love that, uh, except this guy on the, on the edge, he's always the same. Uh, those uh, attacks of kill nets are low level, they are very unsophisticated, it's just like those, just kill it and buy. Uh, attack volume vary between somewhere between 40 and 100 gig, uh, gigabits per second. And they are operating mostly from the Russia. They have, uh, they have enough connections and they have enough service to, uh, to do the attacks by themselves. But they are using the classic tactics we saw in 2010 uh, with, the group, with this uh, group DDoS attacks against Sony and stuff, uh, FBI. Etc. Killnet hates NATO countries. We don't know why, but, but they do. Uh, most known attacks of the Killnet, it's uh, obviously February 2022. Uh, they went down and uh, uh, knocked out some Ukrainian uh, government websites. There was also some leakage and stuff for us was very important merge in April of 2022, where various NATO countries was attacked, between them Germany, United Kingdom, United States, Romania, Poland, Czech Republic, of course. And in April 22, they unleashed their power on the Romanian government. And uh, May in 2022 was very, uh, very interesting attack on Eurovision, which never happened but it was very nicely, uh, very nicely promoted on the Telegram channel of uh, Killnet. And 220, uh, 2022, attack on Italy, Carabinieri was down, so no fines on the roads. And this is our most recent addition to the Killnet. This is the tarp which was uh, hanged on the building of uh, Ministry of Inferior on Czech Republic, where the Mr. Putin was put in some nice bag. And it was put there on the 17th November. Uh, guess what happened on the 18th? Yeah, we was bombed by Dedos. Uh, on the other hand, there is Sandworm. That's completely different group. It's nothing, uh, they don't have Telegram channel. They don't have forum. So we are out of information mostly. Uh, Sandworm is attributed to GRU, which is not GRU anymore. Already like five years. And they are operating at least since from 2009. Most known attacks again in 2015-16, attacks on power grid in Ukraine and companies and government organizations. Everybody remember NotPetya. We still have the stickers. I survive, I survive NotPetya attack. Another 
Another champion is Olympic destroyer in the Korean uh, Olympic Games. Uh, 2018 uh, attack on country uh, Georgia. There, uh, there is some similarities to the Ukraine uh, in the Five Days War. And we think they're sharing their resources with APT28, which is attributed to GRU as well, but also with some other secret services as is uh, FSB, etc. Uh, actually, uh, for our uh, for our use case. Uh, we didn't we didn't pick the kill net. That's uh, for us the point. Uh, it's pointless. And you will show uh, you will see in our loop uh, that uh, it doesn't make uh, much sense. This is much better better case. So we choose the hermetic wiper as malware as attack vector. Impact <coughs> is an availability of device, and it was used in January 2020 in Ukraine first. Then it uh, went up to uh, Latvia and Lithuania as well. So, before we will we apply the use case, I mean, sandworm behavior to, to our custom loop, let's go talk uh, general, uh, generally you know, about CT, uh, CTI loops. It's about planning, collecting, processing, and uh, analyzing, and uh, distribution of, uh, of information, you know. So, and our ACD loop, uh, did, you, did you see it? Before, yeah, I, I guess about 10, 10 minutes ago. Yeah, it's based on active cyber defense uh, gray zone and it includes activities and uh, elements of adversary emulation, threat intelligence, threat hunting, and uh, deception. And under deception, uh, you can include uh, beacons, uh, deterrents, tar pits and boxes and honeypots. But it's not just about these active you know, or proactive, proactive activities and elements. Uh, in our ACD loop are used uh, reactive parts too, like detection. So what are the steps of I, our ACD loop? First step is managing new knowledge threats. Uh, second is about risk analysis and analysis outputs. Uh, third is uh, creating testing scheme modeling. It, uh, step four is verify test execution. Uh, five, tune, uh, it's uh, about uh, detection engineering, covering blind spot and using ACD elements. And last step is validation, doing second test about loops generally. We didn't create it, uh, this ACD loop, for distribution it, yeah? Uh, because every organization is uh, different and has its context. So, uh, you can use it if you want, but consider it, yeah. Our use case application. Uh, through the ACD loop, we will, we will, we will uh, show you inputs and outputs of each and attack vector uh, is vapors and uh, used uh, in January on critical information in Ukraine. So, first step, CTI, retrieve as many information as possible from reports, from internal and external honeypots, beacons, and some other rules. Output, sandworm in context. Our, unified uh, CTI report, uh, where we can inc uh, have uh, Yara rules for detection, malicious behavior, some IOC, and we can see typical TTP for, for Sandworm, uh, for maybe their infrastructure, some tradecraft, and intended goal. Yeah, um, as a tool for, for our CTI report, we used uh, custom, uh, created objects in MISP. It's for free. Uh, second step is about, uh, about two things. Uh, managing CTI. CTI report, you saw it before, and uh, lead the custom risk analysis uh, method methodology with use of active cyber defense uh, as a countermeasures. So, Let's go to analyze. Threat identification, destruction, malware. We take the risk assessment. Likelihood is four, impact is four, risk value is 16, critical level. What about risk treatment? Our decision was to reduce it by implementation of measure, typical uh, decision for risk analysis. And what are the measures? 
First measures are for detection. Second is straight uh, deployment of ACD elements. Why we do it? Just getting the time. Yeah. We start with implementing uh, the or deployment of ACD elements, and uh, we can gain the time for detection engineering and hardening the rules. And we can straight reduce the risk. For detection, we use ACD elements for covering blind spot in detection. Where we got the measures list? Former shield by Maitre, now it's engage attack mappings. It's just Excel sheet where you can uh, saw the links between TTPs and active countermeasures. Some, some TTP and just use honeypot or beacon to, to mitigate it. So, measures implementation, detection. We will cover in next steps. ACD elements, uh, we, we use DC for honeypot with no vulnerability, it was exchange server. And we needed to take reassessment, risk reassessment. Likelihood is four, impact is three, and total risk value is 12, still critical. Now, let's model it. Yeah, I have to speed up. Uh, the model is practically graphic, uh, graphical expression of the, of the steps you have to take to, uh, to, uh, the, uh, to put this in the context. And as you see, we, saw, uh, we use the MITRE uh, free tool, Attack Flow, uh, but you can use any tool you like which is able to draw the square, something like that. Uh, but those, uh, those, that model is, of course, is including the IOC, TTPs, artifacts or actions. So you can model your scenario for execution. Uh, the first step in verification uh, before you, uh, when you execute, is to, uh, is to verify where your standing is and how you stand in this, uh, in this actual status, what it is. Uh, we use, of course, the adversary emulation in quotes, because that's very simplified. And we are, we are using for documentation the ADS, which I will talk in, in like two slides from, uh, from now. So just keep that in, in the head. Uh, how to do the adversary emulation the easy way? Well, it's, uh, it's divided into three categories again. Uh, one is atomic, everybody knows atomic red team scripts, uh, APT simulator and, uh, and stuff. There is a lot of tools on the GitHub where you can find this, uh, these things when you uh, when you try and just one, uh, one thing with one, uh, one click, you will, uh, you will check if you are able to detect it or not. For rapid emulation, again, Maitre, it's all over the place these days. Uh, it's Caldera, it all allows you also to create the campaigns and the, the flows. And the last is the full scale red teaming, or maybe half scale, it depends how much money you get. And this is basically our first result. Uh, we, we did verify our initial status. And as you see, the defense success rate is about 28 something percent, which is, not, not, uh, which is nothing to write home about, but you know, it's better than some other agencies. And uh, you have to go to the step five, because of course you are not satisfied with the result like this. So you have to tune up the things. You have to go uh, with the detection. But uh, to tell you about detection, I have to tell you about ADS. I talked about like two, two slides uh, before. ADS is, uh, is short for Alerting and Detection Strategy. It was created by Palantir in year 2017, so it's pretty old, but it still works. And basically, it's nothing else than the strategy how to document your work with the detections. Uh, we add the sigma rule uh, for the 10 categories they already had, and the ACDA element for the, uh, for the blind spots. You can see this is just like another object in the MISP, which we created for just this, uh, this hour uh, loop. You have to first, you have to tune the detection so you can see your blind spots. And where those blind spots uh, are, just stick there the honeypot, tokens, tokens, beacon, whatever. Uh, beacon is a document. And of course, document uh, your progress. Yeah, uh, please, technical guys. 
uh, screw up. Uh, you can keep everything in your head. Document it, please. So let's take a step aside how to deploy ACD elements two ways, ad hoc. It's easy to, easy to use, but badly managed. Uh, systematic deployment, it's uh, easy to manage, but it's more expensive. So here is our uh, maybe manager's screw up. It was about uh, to choosing the easiest way uh, and prefer the quick win before, uh, before the long preparation. Yeah? We took uh, the investigation and it was a uh, different manager and his mistake. So another mistake is about ACD implementation. Uh, it's not security solo. You need the guys from the, from the operation. Yeah? Uh, you need process, defined roles, and you need to cooperate with them. No solo. And uh, finally, for this day, uh, we are in six and validate, and this is the last step of our loop. And it's actually a validation of the, all the work, hard work we've done. Uh, we will measure the detection success and efficiency of our ACD elements we put in the place. And as you see, we came from the very bad result to partial awesomeness in 78.57 defense success rate which may be good for someone, but who wants more than that? It can go to the step four. And a reassessment already did. Uh, well, uh, recommendation after the loop, when you, uh, when you finish with your loop, just go and, uh, and do your cybersecurity hygiene. Thread hunting, pen test externally, useful sometimes. Red teaming externally, if your organization mature enough and if you have enough money. Purple team, it's always a good idea with any friendly agency or organization. And this is the end of the loop. And here is our armory. You can visit this website. It's, uh, it's actually not a website, it's just a shortcut to the Start Me page where you will find all the information for this uh, presentation. Uh, we will also publish the, uh, publish the presentation at Blackhead. Uh, we do, as the part of the DEFCON group 420, we get the active cyber defense gray zone, which you saw. Uh, we do the custom ADS, like GitHub in GitHub repository, and we got also the custom risk analysis uh, with, the, with the ACD. Uh, with the ACD. Uh, those will be published on January 2003. We got the, uh, we got, Hold on. <laughs> I have to thank the MISP. We got some few things there. In adversary emulation, we always uh, we always uh, use the vector atomic red team. Everything is cool by Mitre, including the spaceship building program, and of course we love incident response tool number one Excel. Yeah. Just recap. So we used Sandworm behavior. We go through our ACD loop, which includes ACTI death detection hardening and using ACD elements for blind spot and as countermeasures. We used custom risk analysis with ACD elements. And we tried to build resiliency. Our results, numbers, False positive before and after 76 and 20, 29. Uh, introduced screw up five, but it was uncounted number. <laughs> yeah. Uh, introduced new alerts 12. Validation of the rules in the context of ACD. Attack TTP 14. Test run eight. Blind spot identified three. Per percentage of rules change from 33 3 to 95. Let's go answer hypothesis. Can ACD eliminate the possibility of successful attack? Yes, but nothing is black and white, you know. So it's possible to anticipate or prepare for an attack due to CTI. Yes, all security agencies in the world rely on the intel for their decision making. It's possible to increase the resilience of an environment. Yes, we just prove it, I hope. So with what accuracy can attacks be predicted based on the CTI analysis? with high probability. And answer to main hypothesis, does the ACD attitude uh, works for better resiliency? Absolutely about us. We are at the end of file. 
I don't need to skip this joke, but do not for, <laughs> for, forget, make love, not worries, and uh, build resiliency. And now, blackhead sound bites. Be active, meaning proactive. Don't rely on medicine, but be your own doctor. I mean, like Doctor Who, the guy who can manage everything and combine something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Questions? <laughs>